Uh, I'd like to introduce Mr. Suhel Aljanabi, who is uh, a communications professional and the co-manager -manager of the ABS Capacity Development Initiative, and they've done a lot of work on communication and strategic communication and capacity development. And so, uh, uh, Suhel, I wonder if you could also comment on which of the results did you find most interesting, and how would you make use of it in, in your line of work? Well, good afternoon, and thank you, David, for this uh, question. Um, before getting to how uh, I could make use of concrete examples, maybe uh, some general words on uh, the worldwide views, which I find uh, is an absolutely and, and truly exciting project. Because you said I'm a communication expert, which is uh, true, um, but communication in, uh, in and under the convention and in the SEPA program of work very often just uh, stops as a one-way communication so that is from from the uh, from the sender to the receiver and uh, um, the, there are projects for example like the biodiversity barometer who measure the awareness of uh, uh, biodiversity out there in, in different countries but this particular project goes uh, one step further and this is uh, uh, then about participation, about integration. Um, so uh, I think it does comply very, very much with strategic plan, and I believe it's also somewhere reflected now um, in, in the COP decisions that it does support both the strategic goal A on, on mainstreaming and on the other hand also on participation and integration. So this is really kind of a perfect approach to my point of view. How, um, how uh, public uh, can be addressed and on the other way around how uh, public opinion can be generated and uh, then there is the, uh, the, the challenge how public opinion can be uh, feed it back into the political process and I think this is where I get now to, to my uh, um, uh, piece of work. Uh, I was almost tempted to say uh, Probably this is the counter element to, to the IP best, to the, because uh, one could call it the DP best, so the, the Democratic Panel on Biodiversity and Ecosystem, uh, Ecosystem Services. So, uh, because there's also an, an interface needed between uh, citizens and population and, and policy makers and not only uh, of, of scientists, that's, uh, that's my true belief. Um, with regard to uh, what uh, what results uh, of, of the studies uh, could could help us um, in the short video there was a, uh, a reflection on often genetic resources or sorry <coughs> genetic resources in the high seas and whether or not they should be subject to benefit sharing and you know that this is one of the very hot topics now in the debate on uh, the, uh, the Nagore protocol this uh, famous article 10 and uh, uh, in both in developing and in developed countries there are more than 85 percent of uh, the citizens say yes or, uh, why why precisely these genetic resources not being uh, subject of benefit sharing the same uh, um, though there are differences uh, you find um, that a majority of people are in favor of uh, the idea of sharing benefits also for genetic resources which have been acquired prior to the convention uh, prior to the Ringo protocol uh, and are now in existence to collections. Um, this, I think, um, is, is very important, but I, what, what, what I find problematic is if uh, I'm, I'm wearing also um, a badge now as a party, a uh, German party, and I would, if I would come up with these uh, results now in the next EU coordination and say that this is what our citizens think, um, I think there would be still a problem of, let's say, credibility and ac acknowledgement of the, these kind of um, uh, uh, approaches and this is something that we still have to uh, to address how um, these kind of uh, how you call it direct democracy approaches can be also in the political cycle and in decision making um, be, be better reflected and, and recognized in the African context I believe uh, that would be even easier because we have more uh, basic democratic functions at least uh, this is what what my experience uh, uh, so far uh, reveals but uh, particularly in, in Europe to take these up in, in, in decision-making processes uh, I believe there's still uh, a way to go thank you great thank you very very much I think that gives us a sense too of, of how it can contribute globally to the awareness raising agenda and also some of the challenges we have to making it uh, form uh, the integrated part of the global political process. Thank you, Suhel.